This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The question, what is your favorite movie, is one of the hardest yet easiest questions for me to answer. While I have a list of favorite movies that is nearly impossible to rank, the one I always consider to be number one is Fantastic Mr. Fox. Not only has it become one of my favorite films of all time, it remains one of the most important movies I've ever seen. Fantastic Mr. Fox, if you don't know, is a stop-motion animation of the original Roald Dahl novel marketed for the most part for kids. Despite how it may have been promoted, the film is for more than just children, considering kids aren't the only ones learning from the film. Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of those rare movies that appeals to every age group out there. Now, that's not entirely why I consider this film so important. You have works like The Simpsons Movie and The Incredibles which both accomplish the same thing. So what exactly makes this one so special? In short, I think Fantastic Mr. Fox not only entertains, but it teaches the audience, and it does so in an almost invisible way. To explain, let me start back in 2009, the year the film was released. Having only experienced films by Pixar, DreamWorks, and other companies that garner towards children, watching this film for the first time at a young age was a very unique experience. Some of the other animated films I had seen that year include Coraline, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Monsters vs. Aliens, and How Could I Forget, Up. These films were incredibly enjoyable as a child, understandably. They had an out-of-this-world plot with characters I had never seen before. To sum it up, they were quote-unquote big movies. Despite all that, Fantastic Mr. Fox ended up being the most interesting film I saw that year. I owe that excitement to the fact that it was everything but a big movie. The characters are basically normal humans you would see anywhere in animal costumes. It's obvious that this was the intention given the immersive process of making the film as seen in the behind-the-scenes footage. I'll put it this way. As a child, I was used to seeing characters in animation that I could never see anywhere else. These were characters I would dream about and fantasize about living with in the bizarre world within the film. While I had seen characters with human-like traits, I had never seen a character with such a lack of self-knowledge. This is why I find Fantastic Mr. Fox so important to filmmaking. I was at my most creative as a child. Everyone was to a certain extent. Our fascination with the world around us hits peak at that young age because we are so unaware at that point in our lives. Film at that time serves as one of the key places to experience the perspectives of others and gain a sense of reward and satisfaction that the characters on screen would receive. I'd gain interest in a particular character, the character would mess up, I'd feel bad for them, they'd redeem themselves and save the day, and by the end of it, I would feel a sense of relief and joy. Mr. Fox is paranoid. He's always reassuring himself he's battling an addiction. He admits his wrongdoings throughout the film, making us question the legitimacy of each time he does so. This sense of reality in the film hits its peak in the Canis Lupus scene near the end of Act 3. This scene has puzzled me and many others as the hardest scene to decipher given the fact that it's so short, yet Wes Anderson labels the scene as the reason he's making the movie. Here's my take on it. The reasoning behind making Fantastic Mr. Fox an animated film is that we're dealing with talking animals. Given their mature, human-like thought, that's about it. This idea of disguising humans as wild animals serves as a message towards using goofy, surreal, almost humorous traits to cover up the true identity and flaws that everyone has. It's in this scene that Mr. Fox comes to terms with his true self, a wild animal. Before he is a journalist, before he is a fox in human attire, he's just that, a wild animal. Throughout the film we hear Mr. Fox say, Wolf! What wolf? Uh, nothing? Mr. Fox doesn't have a phobia of wolves, rather, he has a phobia of accepting defeat. By the end of the film, while it doesn't necessarily feel like a loss, it doesn't really feel like a victory. Mr. Fox's original goal had always been to not want to live in a hole the rest of his life. I don't want to live in a hole anymore, and I'm going to do something about it. <laughs> he didn't want to be a wild animal. Despite all the efforts and victories against Bogus Bunce and Bean, Mr. Fox ended up back in a hole because, as a wild animal, that's for better or worse where he belongs. I label Fantastic Mr. Fox as being one of the most important films I've seen because exposing children to defeat and an imperfect ending is something that is rarely seen in animation. Fantastic Mr. Fox teaches the idea that even if things aren't perfect in the end, there are smaller things in life to appreciate, and working yourself up over impractical goals solves nothing. This movie is, to me, much more than just a movie. This movie is about acceptance, not only from those around you, but from yourself. It's about being aware of yourself and understanding it's okay to admit you're wrong. When kids are at an age where they don't fully understand the world around them, it's important to address some of the downsides in life through film, because sometimes life isn't always a happily ever after. What Wes Anderson did here was something I've seen few directors do so seamlessly. 
He didn't just make a film for kids with adult ideas or a film for adults that attracts to children. He made a film for everyone, achieving one of the most important goals to have as a filmmaker. As always, don't forget to subscribe, go watch this movie, and thank you for watching. Before I end the video, I want to give a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's episode. If you're looking to design your own website, whether that be a blog, an online store, or portfolio, Squarespace is a great place to do so if you're looking to make a website to call your own in a simple and easy way. Go to squarespace.com slash karsten to get 10% off your first purchase. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.